Hello everyone. So, we will start the next segment of the course evaluation of textile material which is that first segment it is a sampling method and sample size. In this session we must understand that what is sampling, what is sample and why do we want sampling. So, evaluating or estimating attributes or characteristics of the entire system process or product through a representative sample. The term which is important is representative sample can be more efficient while still providing the required information. Suppose we have a huge quantity of say yarn, say uh, yarn of uh, lakhs of yarn uh, bobbin, thousands of ring bobbins are there. If we want to test all the bobbins total material for say its count or its strength, it is not feasible. So, we have to select the representative sample to evaluate any attributes. And this if we can sample properly scientifically, this will give sufficient information and which will be actually useful. So, question is that what does sampling mean? So, it is a relatively small fraction of material which is selected from the respective population and the selection is not random. There are certain process of selection. So, main reason of sampling. So, why do we need sampling? We can go for testing of whole material. If I have one product, one item, I will go for testing. Okay, this is okay. This I will test everything. I will try to test everything. But then why do we need sampling? Sampling is required because we do not have a small quantity of sample. We have huge quantity of sample, large quantity of sample, but population. Population is a large quantity. So, if we want to test the total entire population, then it requires time and we do not have time. We need the result immediately. For example, if we want to know the evenness of yarn, say 30 count yarn, cotton yarn, which is being produced in a particular factory of say 1 lakh spindle. So, per day it is producing say more than 1 lakh bobbin, this type of bobbin. And if we want to test the entire population, then it will be time consuming. So, we cannot get result immediately. So, we want result immediately. So, we cannot test the entire population. So, we have to take the small fraction of that. So, time it is related with the cost. So, when it requires manpower, it requires everything the instrument, number of instrument, power, everything. So, it, it its cost is enhanced. Next reason is that most of the textile materials are testings are the destructive in nature. So, if we 
keep on destroying the population, then the we will not get the material, actual material. So, we have to select the sample. So, these are the two basic reason for which we have to go for sampling and sampling is required basically for textile material. It is very important because textile material it is variable in nature. So, if we see a particular product which is where variation is not there like one industry who is producing a ball particular ball say iron ball by say certain method and that there is a fixed system fixed process and it will keep on producing the ball of same diameter same dimension a rod uh, an industry is producing a rod okay iron rod it will be having almost same dimension. So, variability is not there in that case sampling although sampling will be required, but it is not that critical, but in textile material main problem is that most of the textile material be it fiber, yarn, fabric wherever it is a it is a variable in nature you take any characteristics diameter it is a variable in diameter strength it varies from place to place. So, sampling here it is extremely important just one small quick example of sampling. Suppose I want to sample 100 gram of cotton from say 10 tons of cotton. So, what is the fraction you are trying, trying to see? So, 1 by 10 to the power 5 that small fraction we are taking for product testing. Similarly, say 10 random sample of cones we are trying to take from 15 ton consignment. So, we are taking a small fraction. So, by doing these things we are saving time, saving cost and we are saving the material also, but the sampling has to be perfect. So, that it gives confidence that it is actually giving indicating the characteristics of the population. So, when the set of all possible items in a population is very large, it may be too costly or too time consuming to do a comprehensive analysis of all the items. So, if you take another example, for example, ring bobbins in a spinning mill, it may be too expensive to test all the bobbins to determine the yarn characteristics, say strength. So, the basic aim of sampling is to produce an unbiased representative of whole population. It should be free from biasness. So, the result of sample may be different from the population, but the sampling should be unbiased there should not be any it is a only variation should be in the chance, but none other than that. For example, in cotton fiber sampling from bell the proportion of fiber length in a sample should be almost same as the proportion in the bulk then only we can test the sample for length or diameter. So, if we do the random sampling, so unbiased sampling, then we can 
tell with certain confidence the proportion whatever the proportion of length whatever there in the sample is almost in the proportion there in the bulk in the bell. If we take the sample from the bell or from the bulk at random from random places then we can tell, but if we have some biasness then the we will not get this same proportion or through sampling system each fiber in the bell should have equal chance of being chosen for sampling. So, you are giving all the fibers equal chance for to get selected means if it is a fiber is in the bell form if the person testing person goes he is picking the sample from the surface from the outside the bell. Now, let us see suppose this is a bell okay, fibers are there different fibers are there. Now, if the system says that he will only pick the fiber from the surface, then the things will be that that if it is known if it is the standard then what people will start doing the fiber manufacturer okay, fiber supplier they will do they will give smaller fiber at the center covered with long fiber. Then we are getting wrong sample. So, the sampling is telling that there is no biasness. We have to take the sample from everywhere, the chance of sampling is there from everywhere. So, the all the fibers from the center of the bell, from the surface of the bell, from the bottom of the bell, the there are fibers are they are they have the equal chance okay. and for that we have to select some sampling process. The governing factor for sampling is that that means, the what type of sampling will decide will adopt it is decided by the form of the material like whether it is a fiber form, it is a yarn form or it is a fabric form. Okay. If it is fiber whether it is a loose fiber or it is a in bale form or the fiber is from the sliver. So, the sampling method of fiber so, we are taking say fiber this is the fiber and here also we are taking fiber they are the same it is fiber, but if the form of material if it is in loose form the sampling technique will be entirely different from the fibers if it is in the sliver form. Similarly, if you want to test the fiber characteristics from roving which is twisted. So, here the testing method will be totally different. So, sampling method. So, sampling method is tot entirely governed by the, the form of the material. Suppose, we want to test yarn from the bobbin. This is the sampling technique will be different than if we want to test yarn from a fabric, from fabric if we want to test yarn say we want to test twist of yarn from fabric the sampling technique will be entirely different. Next is the nature of material, okay. nature of material of same form like as we have discussed the form whether it is a 
in the form of bell, in the form of sliver, in the form of yarn. But if it is in the same form like bell, bell in wool and bell in cotton, it is entirely different. Because cotton if you open, you can take out the fiber because it is a just compressed, but wool in bell form it is entirely different because it contains a huge quantity of grease which make it very compact. Okay. So, that fiber sampling from bell of wool is different from fiber sampling of from the bell of cotton. So, from bell of cotton we can pick the fiber by hand, but for wool we cannot do. So, for wool sampling, wool fiber sampling the system is different that we will discuss. Okay. Then amount of material available, suppose I have a material of a container of say 15 ton of yarn. So, thousands of bobbins are I mean cones are available. In that case, I will adopt a particular sampling technique, but I have if I have only say 10 bobbins are available. In that case, the sampling technique will be different. Okay. Nature of test. So, nature of for based on the nature of test, we have to adopt the different sampling techniques like high volume instrument where you need sufficient quantity of material. Okay. In that case, you can actually take different sampling technique. Then, if we need say single fiber length measurement, in that case we have to adopt different uh, sampling technique, type of test instrument. So, whether we are going for a slow method or very fast method or different types of same parameter, same parameter like again it is a HVI test or it is a comb sorter. So, different types of test method, test instrument we have to sample differently. Information required, for example, say diameter do you want to measure diameter or we want to measure fiber length? We will see in wool testing one sampling technique is called core sampling technique. In core sampling technique where a coring tube is there, coring tube penetrate inside the wool bell where which cuts the wool fiber. So, which cuts the and take the core, take the sample from the inside the bell. Now, once it is cutting the fiber that means, do we want to test, we do we test length for that? We will not test. That coring technique is used for either diameter measurement or maybe grease content measurement. If we want to test the length of wool fiber, then it will be sampling technique will be entirely different. Okay. So, what information do we require based on the based on that we can change the sampling technique. Like twist, if we want to measure the twist, the sampling technique will be entirely different from the if we want to measure the least strength. So, total different sampling technique will be there, okay. because for twist we need small smaller length, for lead testing we need say 120 yards length. Okay. So, that how we have to change our sampling technique, degree of accuracy required. So, if we think the okay, okay, we want to only know the characteristics, okay, overall characteristics then our sampling our number of sample should be will be less. Uh, we can have say from a single bobbin we can test just to know the get the idea, but 
if we want to have certain confidence say at 99 percent confidence level or 95 percent confidence level we can tell okay this is the range it's required okay in that case we need a large number of sample so sampling technique has to be changed then the sampling type the sampling type is broadly divided into two categories one is called statistical sampling and next is the non statistical sampling statistical sampling means it is the process sampling techniques these are the techniques where you use bit of statistics some randomness you use and non statistical where we don't need statistical technique okay the statistical sampling again can be subdivided into four categories four types first is called random sampling then systematic sampling third one is stratified sampling which is based on the strata means subgroup we are subgrouping that stratified subgrouping and fourth one is the cluster sub sampling so and the non statistical sampling is subdivided into two categories one is called haphazard sampling and then judgmental sampling so these are the uh, different uh, types of sampling we'll start with the statistical sampling and statistical random sampling so random sampling is based on a random number generation in this method each item in the population has the same probability of being selected as a part of sample as any other sam material sample so they have the equal opportunity of being selected okay just for example a person testing person could randomly select 20 bobbins so his idea is to select 20 bobbins okay to test case of population bobbin within the range of 1 to 1000 so 1000 bobbins are there he has to select the only 20 bobbins okay to execute some testing so how to do that what he will do he will he can use two techniques one is he can use the random number he can generate random number so from 1 to 1000 20 random number can be generated and he picks the sample at 20 okay. but here one has to be very careful that the population is numbered careful it is a random way there is no biasness in numbering so the lab technician could, could use a random number generator or he can simply one is random number generation or he can simply put the number 1 2 3 4 5 and 1000 number he can put in small slip and randomly put tick like random lottery and this 1 to 1000 are like 1000 spindles in ring frame there are 1000 spindles in ring frame and he has generated the random number 20 numbers and he picks the bobbin from the, those all those spindles and here the as it is randomly generated so all the bobbins they have the equal opportunity so that is how, how he is using some statistical technique and it is called random sampling and one advantage is that 
in random sampling he can use with or without replacement which means suppose he has to test 5 times and what he is doing so with replacement means so suppose he after random generation he has taken say 51 first bobin then 92th bobin 100 something bobin like as such 20, 20 bobins now with replacement means he will again replace this bobins to that place particular their places he will replace and again he will draw the random number that means the same bobin has got chance of being selected there is no issue because he is using a random number. So, random sampling can be done with or without replacement and if he feels this I will not take back all this bobin. So, that means all 20 numbers whatever he has generated he has he will discard he will next sample you will take the uh, replacement sample, you will take the other samples. So, this is done. So, it is if it is done without replacement, an item is not returned to the population again after it is selected, okay. and thus only it can occur only once. Okay. So, that is why, but he can it is up to the system he can do with or without replacement. After random sampling next is the systematic sampling here it is another statistical method here the system is that one has to be careful here in this method every nth sample nth element he will take from the list of selected okay, starting with the sample element n randomly selected from the k element. So, there are k elements every k elements. So, he will pick nth term I will give example. If the population has 1000 bobin, so he it has got 1000 bobin and ultimately we have to select we are our idea is to select say 100 bobins 100 bobins are selected that means if you divide 1000 by 100 so k is value is 10 so so 10 every 10th segment every 10th subgroup he has to pick one sample so here k value is 10 so among 10th suppose he decides well, okay among every 10th 10 bobin I will select 6th value 6th bobin. So, if number 6 which is n is randomly selected from first 10 k value first 10 elements on the list the sample would continue down the list selecting the every sixth element from every group of tenth element. That means, what if it is 1 to 1000, you will start taking sixth, sixteenth, twenty sixth like that. So, this nth term, it is actually one can decide randomly. Okay. So, care must be taken when using the systematic sample to ensure that the original population list has not been ordered. So, it is population list has to be random okay, ordered in any way which actually can introduce non randomness. So, the po original population has to be totally random there is no biasness. Similar example one can give here, it is a bobbin of 1000 spindles. So, every 6th, 16th, 26th bobbin he can take okay. 
another example you can see same in a spinning mill if the auditor of the buying house selects the 14th ring bobbin out of 20th in a random list of all the bobbins <coughs> it is randomly eh? so arranged so 14th he is trying to do. then what are the numbers you will take first he will take 14th then he will take 34th then 54th 74th in this way so after systematic sampling next is that stratified sampling which is actually this is the statistical sampling this sampling is used when representative from each subgroup subgroup is known as strata within the population need to be represented in the sample it is not like random sampling random sampling it may or may not incorporate a particular group like in a an industry who is producing say 30 count yarn from same on a set ring frame set it has got say 100 ring frame so it is producing 30 count and the ring frame they are from different manufacturers different manufacturer manufacturer 1 manufacturer 2 3 4 say 4 5 manufacturers now random sampling says that out of 1000 spindle you take random depending on the random number generation don't concentrate on the the manufacturer manufacturer a b what you can take if it is coming random number if you may select the 10 bobbins from a same manufacturer but stratified sampling says it's not you first subgroup the make subgroup the manufacturer first so man, manufacturer 1 manufacturer 2 manufacturer 3 manufacturer 4 and then decide how to take the sample and you have to take sample from each and every subgroup either you decide i will select say uh, say four subgroups four subgroups are there and you have to take say 20 bobbins so i'll i am deciding okay i'll decide take five from each manufacturer and this five when you have selected decided then you go for random number but here in stratified sampling the advantage